speaker is Ad Hikari, Visual Cryptography and DNA Secret Sharing, Two Simple Ways to Store Secret Information in a Secure Way. So firstly I'd like to thank the organizer for inviting me here. So I'm a little off and out maybe here because uh, my talk will not be on anything related to uh, relativity theory. But what I'm going to talk here is again uh, the important matter of storing securely our secret data. So the title of my talk is Visual Cryptography and DNA Secret Sharing, Two Simple Ways to Store Secret Information in a Secure Way. Well, so everybody in our life we do have some secret and uh, usually we don't want to share the secret with others so the best thing to store the best place to store the secret is our brain but in our modern life due to this electronic gadgets and all we do have lots of different passwords for example password for opening bank accounts or uh, email or mobile and these passwords are basically for security reason, they are made up of alphanumeric characters, sometimes capital, small, and uh, special characters. So there are lots of information that we need to have all the time. So it's not always very possible for us to store all those information in our brain. So sometimes what we do, we store this information to our mobile, or sometimes in our email, or sometimes in the cloud. The same password, if we store in many places, then the probability of stealing this information is more. So we need to have some technique to store this information securely. Very recently, we all have witnessed uh, about uh, the ransomware attack. So it was a virus attack, and many of the computers were hacked, and most of the data that were locked. And it was asked for money, and if some money is given, then only the data are retrieved. So, under this situation, we need some technique to store it properly. So, in my talk, I will basically give some of these uh, ways to store things securely. So, since uh, this is a short talk, so I mostly try to give a basic idea of what is being uh, there, uh, not much details. So, let me explain what is secret sharing for a simple example. Suppose uh, there are three good-looking friends and uh, they have some uh, nice job to do. So what they decide that whatever income they do have, they will put the income inside a box. But since they don't have belief on each other, what they need is that they require a particular kind of key, special kind of key in such a way that if at least two of the three friends are present, then only uh, this box will be open. So for a single friend, the box cannot be opened. So they require a special person. In cryptography, we call the special person as a dealer. So dealer will provide a special key to all this participant in such a way, if at least two of the friends will be present, then only the locker will be opened. So if you look at, this is known as PN threshold scheme. So in our real life, we do also have a similar kind of applications. For example, especially in India, in the bank, if you go, then if you use uh, to open your locker, then a person from the bank he uses his key and the customer, they use their key. If both the keys match, then only the lockers are opened. Similarly, for launching a missile, if in some country they do have a very strong missile, then the control of the missile is not given to a particular person but it's given to a class of or a two or three person in such a way if all of them they agree to launch the missile then only the missile can be launched. So now I'm going to show you a very simple technique to how to share a secret. So here I have two transparent shapes. Some black and white dots are printed over there. Now if I give to you what is written over there, it's difficult for you and you don't believe or oh, I'm not sure it can be proved mathematically that from one transparent sheet you won't get any information about the secret. So that's the mathematics behind that. But if you superimpose both of them, you'll get the information back. 
it, it may look like it's a gambling, but it's mathematics is there. So from there you may not see it properly, but if you try with uh, this uh, during break, you can see that the information is really inside. So I'm just first going to explain what is being there inside. So here we have basically the black and white image. So as we all know that this black and white image are basically made up of black and white dots. So in uh, computer science we call it black dots is black pixel, white dot that means nothing is printed on the transparent sheet, that's white. Now if we superimpose one black pixel over a white pixel, that means I have a black printed out, print out on the transparency and nothing is printed on the transparency. If I superimpose the black pixel over the white pixel, that means transparent, as an effect, visual effect will get a black pixel. So if both of them are black and if we superimpose over another, then also we'll get visually the black effect. The same thing happens for white black, we'll get black, but if both of them are transparent, then only we get a transparent filling. So where is the mathematics? Let's uh, replace that black by 1 and white by 0. And then if we look at, then we'll see that here we have 0, 1 black superimposed over white, it gives me black. 1 superimposed over 1 gives me 1, and so on. So that you can very easily check that this is nothing but the binary operation. So the physical superimposition operation is nothing but the binary or operation. So we are now in mathematics and with using this mathematical techniques we can uh, share this information and I'm just going to give you a brief hints of that, how it can be done. Like the dealer for the black pixel he gives to each participant a black and white, uh, white or black, this can also be given in this way. And if both of them are superimposed, they will get two black pixels. Similar thing may happen for white pixel also. Now, what is the guarantee that from one pixel nobody will, from one share nobody will get any information? It comes from this fact that, okay, suppose one guy having only one share wants to guess whether this comes from black or white. Now you can say that, check that, the same pattern is also present here. So with probability half, the person having only one share can guess whether it comes from white or black. Now, think about the third person who doesn't have even a share. He knows that the pixel is either white or black. For him also the probability of guessing it correctly is also half. So having one share, you don't have any extra privilege over the others who doesn't even have share. So that's the uh, basic, so I don't have time to explain it properly, but this could be extended further. It is the general access structure where there are four participants and there are some secret message and this message can be opened that could be governed by this. P1, P2 can open together this message. P1, P3, sorry. P1, P3 can open this message together. P1, P4 can open this message together or P1, P2, P3 can open this message together. And any superset of this each set can open this message. So if this could be the situation, then we call it it's a general access structure. It could be any access structure. And for that we do use some linear algebraic techniques. I don't have some time to uh, give more details on that, but uh, rigorous linear algebraic constructions as well as arguments are involved to prove that for a forbidden set of participants, they will have no information about the secret. Okay, let's uh, come directly to the DNA part. So, suppose somebody is suspected and he is carrying this kind of uh, share. So, if he is suspected and if uh, he is searched, then of course, uh, somebody will grab this and if this is destroyed, then the person having the other share will have no use. So, the physical security of each share is very important. So, then that's came to my mind uh, to have something in which we can do things where we cannot see it properly. That means if we should can have a mechanism where the size of the shed is very small so that we cannot see in our naked eye, then I think that could be a best solution for carrying this share properly. And certainly this DNA technology that came to my mind. Okay. So that's one of the reasons for why I have chosen this. This is a very small size, huge storage capacity, easy to carry or hide, made up of ATGC, huge parallel computing, stable as DNA double stamped, high longevity, 
and easy to get DNA synthesized, synthesized DNA, though they are very costly. Okay, so now how to get this mathematical operation. So let me explain how this mathematical operation can be achieved by this some encoding techniques. Suppose we have a say 8 bit binary string. Let us first have a look at the positional values. So here the positions are 1, 2 and 8. Now I just encode this by a set theory rotation. The position where it is 1 from left to right. So the first position is 1, third position is 1 and the seventh position is 1. So I represent this as a set. Now if I have a binary string, I will uniquely have this set. But the question is, if I have this set, can I get back this binary string uniquely? Of course, that's not true. Because if we have too many zeros at the end, then also it will give me this set. So this conversion is not both way. So what will give us the both way conversion? So similarly, it can be given like first, second, fourth, and eighth position as one. So the question is, what will give the conversion both way? So if I add an extra information like the set together with the length of the binary string, then this encoding is both way. So if I have this binary string, then I will always have this set together with this length. And if I have this set together with length, then we will always have this binary string uniquely. Okay. So now I need to encode it in DNA method. Suppose uh, the integer 1 is represented by ATGC double standard. So of course, for experimental matter, it won't be that easy. But for the sake of simplicity, I have just taken in this way. So I suppose 1 represented by ATGC, 2 is represented by ATGC concatenated twice. So I represent it by ATGC square. And represent this is by DS2. For 1, it's DS1. For 3, it's DS3, concatenated 3 times. So for any positive integer i, I can have ATGC to the power i, that means DSI. Now come to the encoding technique and the mathematical operation. I need some mathematical binary operation for that. So this set can be represented by DS1, DS3 and DS7. And since they, they are synthesized DNA, they can be very easily put into a solution and make it dry and you can carry it in a blotting paper. So nobody can see even. Similarly, this set can also be represented by DS1, DS2, DS4 and DS8. 1, 2, 4, 8. Now what will happen if I am going to mix them up? So if I am going to mix them up, what will happen? Let's see. So then, in the test tube, we'll have all this 1, 2, 2 is here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, and 8. And if we go back to the information 8, I mean, if we just represent it by this, the encoding technique will get 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 7, 8, 7, 8. And if you look at this, what is this? This is nothing but the binary or operation of this two binary string. So that means the mixing operation in DNA medium is nothing but the binary or operation. So now we are in mathematics. So we can do whatever we like using this binary or operation. And I have already shown you how this binary or operation could be useful for constructing such scheme for secret sharing. Well, one of the reasons for coming to this conference is basically to know whether is it possible to have quantum secret sharing. Believe me, I don't have much idea about quantum mechanics and all. So you being the expert, it's my request that if it's possible to help me out for having some knowledge so that I can use it for this quantum computing. So nowadays, this quantum computing is a hot topic for cryptography. So we have already have some topics on quantum cryptography, but not much on quantum secret sharing. So if I can have some collaboration with you, so it would be nice for me. Okay, so that's my technical part. I do have another thing. So basically, uh, my talk is basically based on uh, this book. So this book is written by myself and Professor Arigari, Basic Modern Algebra with Application, Springer Publication. It's 2014, and all the those who are interested for this uh, may find uh, interesting things here. Well, so there is another non-technical part of mine, uh, so it's about India. 
So I think all of you know about India, but there is some special reason why I'm not talking about this. So in the world map we are here, but we are here. And uh, in India we do have a lot of kind of uh, diversity. So it's a kind of perfect example of unity in diversity. So there we have lots of different things here and there. We do have lots of nice sculptures, so it's a nice place for tourism. Nice place for tourism, we do have lakes, we do have deserts, we do have beaches, we do have sculptures. So I am from the eastern part of India, that's uh, Kolkata. So this Kolkata is the capital of West Bengal, but it was the capital of India in British times. So it was uh, made in, established in 1690, basically. Uh, so the name Calcutta, it was previously known as Calcutta, but now it's known as Kolkata. It's because the local language it says it's Kolkata. And five Nobel laureates from India, actually they are related to Kolkata. So out of which C.V. Raman is from physics, who received Nobel, uh, sorry, Nobel Prize in 1930. And Mother Teresa also, she is from, she died in Kolkata, in, so she got Nobel Prize in Peace. Okay, so we do have a lot of nice foods for uh, uh, this nice tasty and spicy food. So the reason for showing all those things is that basically to invite you uh, in the conference, what we do organize every year in December, so this will be the 11th conference this year and I'm glad to share you the information that for the last eight years we also organize a special session for PART, it's a PART in the conference. So we have a special session, this year also we have a special session with uh, physical interpretation of relativity. So all of you are invited there. and. Uh, Last year, uh, the selected papers were few selected papers of high quality that was selected uh, for publication in this mathematical and statistical applications in life science and engineering by, uh, by Springer and this will be published in uh, this year. So it's uh, under printing process now. So you are all welcome to this conference and to know more about just type MAST 2017 in Google, you will get all the detailed information about this website. So I'm not sure whether it's uh, written properly. Uh, I just translated in Google. Uh, is it correct? Almost, okay. So no chance of testing or checking it. Well, thank you. Any questions?